Imagine a system, right, designed to constantly refresh and uh, elevate the skills of literally hundreds of thousands of educators. That's a massive undertaking. It really is. And today, that's exactly what we're diving into. We're looking at the Central Board of Secondary Education, that's CBSE, and their new 2025 Continuous Professional Development Guidelines. The CPD guidelines. Exactly. Our mission here is to sort of unpack the structure of this uh, required professional growth yeah. using their official notification that went out to schools back in April. And it's so important because these aren't just, you know, suggestions. They're about compliance. Compliance with what specifically? With national standards, things like the National Professional Standards for Teachers, the NPST, and NCERT guidelines too. Ah, okay. And it all ties back to the big picture, India's National Education Policy 2020, mm. you know, aiming for that consistent, high-quality education across the country. Setting a benchmark. Makes sense. So how does this actually work for the teachers and principals on the ground? What's the uh, the core requirement? Okay, so the headline number is 50 hours. 50 hours of CPD every single year for every teacher and principal. 50 hours. That sounds significant. It does, yeah. But here's where it gets quite smart, I think. It's split. Split how? 25 hours come from training provided by CBSE itself or maybe government regional training institutes. Okay, official channels. Right. And the other 25 hours, that's managed by the schools themselves. Oh, interesting. So more localized. Exactly. Either in-house training or sometimes schools might team up you know, in those school complexes to share resources for this. Right, right. So, okay, 50 hours split two ways, but what kind of development are we talking about? Is it just like subject refreshers? Uh, no, it's much broader than that. Yeah. They've actually structured it into three specific areas or domains. Domains, okay. What are they? First, there's core values and ethics. That's 12 hours total. What falls under that? Things like um, gender sensitivity, promoting mental health and wellness for students. Really foundational stuff. Important topics. Okay, what's next? The biggest chunk is knowledge and practice. That's 24 hours. This is more about the actual craft of teaching. So pedagogical skills, subject knowledge. Precisely. And keeping it current, too. Things like using AI in the classroom or uh, experiential learning methods. Very contemporary. Okay, that's 12 plus 24, 36 hours. What's the last domain? The final 14 hours are for professional growth and development. This is broader career stuff. Like understanding the national education policy itself. Exactly. Or skills like stress management. Though there's a little note here. Only up to 11 of these 14 hours can come from the school-led activities. Ah, a cap on that specific part for school-led training. Got it. But you, you mentioned flexibility earlier. The structure sounds quite defined. It is defined. But the way you can meet these hours... That's where the flexibility is, and it's pretty interesting. How so? Well, it's not just about attending formal training sessions or workshops. Okay. They recognize other academically inclined tasks that teachers do anyway contribute to their growth. Like what, for example? Okay, get this. Serving duty for board examination evaluation. That can count for up to six CPD hours. No way. Just doing the marking. Seems so. Also, conducting classroom research projects or even mentoring another teacher that's two hours. That's brilliant. It values the practical work. Exactly. Even writing reflective journals or blogs about your teaching experiences can count for two hours. So it encourages reflection, too. Mm -hmm. And if CBSE assigns you to develop e-content or, say, question banks, that's three hours right there. Wow. Even watching specific online educational sessions, they mention one called Eclavia 3030 STEM Education, can give you three hours. So it really embraces different ways of learning and contributing. It's not just sit and get training. Not at all. It feels much more integrated into the actual professional life of an educator. Okay, this sounds good, but what about the practicalities? Time off, accountability. Right, crucial points. The guidelines state that teachers and principals doing this CPD are considered on official duty. Meaning? Meaning no salary deductions, no need to use up personal leave. It's part of the job. That's a big deal. It shows its value. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And on the flip side, there's accountability for the schools. How? If schools don't make sure their staff participate, they can face penalties under the CBSE affiliation bylaws, uh. Clause 12.2.9 specifically. So there are teeth to it. Definitely. And finding these opportunities is straightforward. is all accessible via the CBSE training portal. Okay, so wrapping this up, what's the big takeaway for you and for our listeners? Well, I think what really stands out is this blend of a comprehensive structure with... Um, Surprising flexibility. Yeah, that mix seems key. It shows a major board seriously thinking about how to drive professional excellence consistently.
but doing it in a way that integrates formal learning with what teachers actually do. It feels like a pretty sophisticated model for continuous learning in a huge sector. It really does. It acknowledges the diverse ways professionals grow. Which leads us to maybe a final thought to leave everyone with. Go for it. If this is how a massive education system is approaching professional development structured yet adaptable, valuing diverse contributions, what could that suggest for other fields? How might other industries rethink their own continuous learning to stay genuinely sharp and innovative? Mm, that's a great question. Could this kind of model work elsewhere? Definitely something to think about.